So Japanese beetles are the bane of the existence of any fruit, bush, or tree grower. They are invasive, they are non-native to our area, they have no natural predators, and they can come in, they can multiply, and they can take out an entire, <laughs> entire field of your bush, bushes or trees, just complete defol defoliation, and they're awful. And I've been battling them ever since I started growing, and today I wanted to share some interesting techniques on how to deal with them, and kill them, destroy them, annihilate them, um, including using two party cups. So let's take a look. Now I've hesitated somewhat doing this video, um, or I've delayed in creating this video because I've been trying to capture my technique of using these to capture the, the, the beetles. Um, and it's really, really hard to get good footage of that because as soon as you get close to the beetles, while I'm setting up the camera, the beetles detect that you're there and they'll drop off the plant or fly away or whatever they do to escape. So it's really, it was, I tried multiple times and maybe at the end of this video I'll include some of the random footage that I tried to collect. Um, but probably not, because it's not very useful. But, um, but I'm going to pretend to show this technique in a moment. Um, but first, let's take a look at the traditional way. So you might uh, be familiar with this particular Japanese beetle trap. It's, uh, you can buy them pretty much everywhere. It's this big bag, and if you look closely, you can actually see the heads of the four little beetles sticking out of the drainage holes. No, I almost feel bad. But they're so destructive that I don't feel too bad. But in any case, it uses a scent attractant right there. The beetles are attracted to that, they get on that, or they get somewhere around the bag. They inevitably fall in because they can't really hold on to this, that plastic. Neither can they climb up the inside of the bag because it's too slippery. And they fall down through and get stuck at the bottom where they collect and die. Um, and these are pretty effective. I don't think they're quite as amazing as, of course, marketing would tell you, but they do work. Um, right now I have it attached next to my hummingbird feeder just because I had to move it away from my actual berry bushes for the sake of uh, when they came and cut down a bunch of our trees. So this is just a temporary location, I'm not in any way recommending you put it there. I just needed a place to put it. It's still been effective. It's still caught more uh, as <laughs> even in this weird position. Actually look down into the bag. So these work, but they're only going to capture the, so many of them. They're particularly dumb ones that are like, ooh, sexy times. And they go towards that lure and they fall in. They fall for the pheromones. But you're still gonna have to go out and manually remove them from your plants. And that's what these are for and what I'm gonna talk about right now. Japanese beetles will attack pretty much any fruiting bush in your, in your garden. They'll attack annuals, perennials, doesn't matter. They love everything that might be, might, <laughs> anything that has leaves they will attack. But they particularly seem to love my grapes, my hazelnuts, and my hardy kiwis. I find them most often on these plants, and their damage is really, really obvious and telltale. If you see, I'll actually bring you around. If you are in your garden and you start seeing plants that look like this, where the insides are eaten and only the inner stems and the veins remain, creating this sort of like a lace pattern, that is absolutely Japanese beetles. Now, luckily they're easy to identify, I'll actually show you some because I caught some earlier today in my little trap. I don't know if my camera will, will focus, but they're easier to identify. Um, they do come in different colors. This is the kind of the brownish rainbowish, but then there's a solid kind of like molted brown that is less common, but they are devious and destructive and awful. And those Japanese bag traps help. So once you've identified it, you've seen them on your plants, those bag traps help, but you still need to get out there and look for ones that are not quite as dumb to fall for those bag traps. Now, th there's some good things about the Japanese beetle behavior that makes them easy to catch. One, for some reason, they always like to be at the top of the plant, almost always. They like to be out on the outer layer of foliage. Um, it's good to prune your plants so that they are open so that they can't hide in deeper places, but typically they won't. I mean, occasionally you'll find them, so look all around, but they tend to be towards the top and out at the outer layers of your, of your whatever bush that you're growing. So that's convenient because it makes them easy to locate. It also makes them easy to capture. Because one of the good and bad things about 
Japanese beetles is they can feel you coming. And if you get too close or you sh shake the plant a little too much, they typically fall off, which we can take advantage of. They just pretend like they're dead and fall, which um, usually is successful with them because they fall to the ground, they get lost amongst your pots or in your grass, and they're safe until you give up and leave, and then they go back to eating your plants. Now we're gonna take advantage of that for the cups, uh, to capture them in the cups, but they can also fly away. So what, uh, so that's, that's good and bad, because it can make them a little hard to catch, and if you're trying to mess around with your plant too much, they'll know you're coming, they'll, they'll just escape. So the good thing about the falling off is we can take, these, take two cups. Now you'll notice that the, the, the inner cup has holes cut into it, and the outer cup is solid, and it's filled with a little bit of water. You can see the beetles floating in there, dying slowly. So usually what I do is if I find two beetles, often they'll be copulating on the leaf, which makes them easy to do, keeps them distracted. Um, but what you can do is you put one cup underneath the leaf, take the other cup and either hit it or push down, slowly push down. And usually if you do it slowly enough, if you hit them, you might encourage them to just drop off, but they could fly away. So usually it's good to just slowly push down in and shake a little bit. And they'll be so confused that they'll usually just fall and try to, instead of try to fly away, because there'll be something blocking them. And then you just drop the inner cup. And as you can see, the holes, you push it in, it fills with water. And the beetles are now trapped at the bottom. The water soaks, uh, goes up into the upper cup, and they're held underwater until they drown. Now what's particularly fascinating about this is that, okay, so you've captured them, you've gone over all your plants, you now have a nice collection of them in this thing that you're slowly drowning. Leaving this cup, especially if you fill it with a little bit more water, leaving this cup out by your plants, more Japanese beetles will be attracted to the odors that are given off by these struggling and dying beetles and actually drown as well. I don't know how many times I've left, I discovered this by accident. I had no idea this was a thing, and that's actually my theory about why they're attracted to it. So that's not official, but in my experience. So uh, what I, I discovered it by accident by taking this cup after I had caught a bunch, very proud of myself, left it down at the bottom of my plants for next time, because you know I'm out here once a day, twice a day, every day, looking for these darn beetles because you know I need to keep their population down. I wish everyone in my neighborhood was doing it, but in any case, <laughs> I left it in the pot down below and I came back and there was half a dozen beetles dead in the inner cup, drowned in the water. So that's a good tip. Go ahead and leave those awful beetles that are struggling just leave them in here and this itself becomes its own trap. So you can use this double cup method for capturing the beetles, but also for luring in and capturing other beetles when you're not even around. So that's my tip. Again, so the tr trick is look out for beetle damage. It's pretty easy to identify that lace pattern. Um, they'll often be on the upper parts and the outermost parts of the plant. They're easy to identify. They have shiny green backs. You know, you know, include, look up on Google images if I have not provided enough visuals for what they look like. Um, just get a couple party cups, cut a couple holes in the bottle, bottom of the inner cup, fill it with water, knock them in, and go ahead and get a bag trap too, like I showed at the beginning of the video, because those are useful to catch at least some of them. Because if you can get any with the bag, that's great, because it's less that you'll have to manually remove. But it's important that you do because they will breed and if they're allowed to breed and produce larvae that stay in your area, your population will be worse the next year. So stay on top of it, and time after time, you can whittle away at the population, and hopefully in your immediate area can uh, annihilate them <laughs> or reduce their numbers as much as possible. So I hope this video was informative and it helps. If it was, please give me a thumbs up, and please be sure to share this video, because it helps me immensely, and a lot of other people could benefit from this information. These horrible little beetles destroy everything good about growing a garden. So in any case, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for joining me on this journey. Bye-bye.